For those of you live streaming on Zoom, please ensure that your microphone remains muted and your camera off. This has been requested in order to avoid distractions. Also, I will be borrowing from someone else's reflection and playing a song today. And if anyone wishes to have links to these, I'd be happy to furnish them. And so let us begin by reading the Gospel of the second Sunday of Advent this year. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. The words we've just listened to are the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. The first line is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And the very first person to appear is John the Baptist. And what a sight this prophet is, clothed in camel hair, a leather belt around his waist, eating locusts and wild honey. Remember, he comes from a priestly family. He comes from class and status. And yet, his message, both in word and in deed, the good news, is that things are not okay the way they are. I suspect for all of us right now, many things are not okay the way they are. Some of these are common to all of us, such as COVID-19 and all the anxiety, loneliness, and frustration it has caused. Each of us who has moved into Presentation Manor has our own list of things we gave up, things we may still miss because of being here. We may each be at different moments in our transition and adjustment to life here, but what we all have in common is the letting go. And as we all grow older together, the letting go continues, each in his or her own way. And if we look further afield, we can see many things around us that are not okay the way they are. The pandemic has actually helped us to see this more clearly. How is it that some of the most essential workers, all of whom cannot work from home, are terribly underpaid? Why are we failing those who live in long-term care so miserably? How can it be okay to make a profit from long-term care? Why are so many successful women having to give up their jobs to be available for their children when daycare and school become unreliable. And spoiler alert, the answer to that one is because usually mom 
makes a lot less money than dad. In fact, it was this past Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, on which we remembered the 31st anniversary of the Montreal Massacre, the killing of 14 women because and only because they were women. During the first lockdown, many people noticed cleaner air, a return of bird song, and many more signs of our other than human companions enjoying our absence. Remember the Fox family under the boardwalk at Woodbine Beach? Our domination over the rest of creation is not okay. And let us not forget, I can't breathe. People of color, indigenous peoples, people of different sexual orientation, those who do not fit what the majority consider to be the norm. It is not okay for anyone to be smothered and stifled, whether it be literally or figuratively. Take a moment to name for yourself some of the things that are not okay for you right now. So what's the good news? The good news is things are not okay the way they are and it doesn't have to stay this way. We have long heard that Advent is a time of waiting. Several years ago, I came across an Advent reflection by Sally Latkovich, a St. Joseph sister in Cleveland, Ohio. She too speaks of waiting. I would like to read a couple of lines from her reflection. I've been thinking that we've got it all wrong. We need not wait for God. God is always present, always with us. That's what the name Emmanuel means, God with us. And calls us into relationship. God is indeed present with us, and especially in the person of Jesus the Christ. No, this Advent, I've come to see that it's God who waits for us. Wow. Much like John the Baptist, Sally's proclamation turned my understanding and expectations upside down. And isn't it true? One thing the singer Bette Midler got terribly wrong is that God is not watching us from a distance. Every breath I take, every beat of my heart, is a gift from God, is it not? That's how close God is, and yet it's so easy to forget. I certainly can't go through my day remembering to thank God for each breath. Thank you. And then, Thank you. I would never be able to get a full sentence out if I tried to do that. We can't do that. But we can take some special quiet time each day to remember how close God is. We can do that right now. I'm going to ask you to use your imagination for a moment. You might want to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. Please bring to mind someone who loves you very, very much. A spouse, a parent, brother, a sister, a child, a close friend. Imagine that person sitting next to you now and holding you in a wonderfully warm and loving embrace. 
favor that feeling. And now, take a deep breath and let God in. Let God hold you in a wonderfully warm and loving embrace. What are you feeling? Love, peace, joy? Here is some good news. One way to start changing all the things that are not okay is to spend some time each day sitting in God's embrace like this and savoring that feeling. If we do so, we can't help but pass it on. I know for sure that the opposite is true. When I rush through my daily prayer or skip it entirely for whatever reason, I'm not able to share love, peace, and joy as I go through my day. Instead, I'm sharing my anxiety and frustration. Each of us is like the center of a ripple that moves out through a pond in concentric circles. What kind of ripple are we sending out? You may be familiar with the old TV show, MASH. One time in the midst of a major crisis, the chaplain, Father Mokei, asked the surgeons how he could help. He was asked to pray. And he said, ah, uh, that's all I ever get to do. I think we are, we are called to more than just pray. But I think that we're always called to do whatever it is from the starting point of prayer. What we're called to do will be different for each of us according to our circumstances. No one can say there's nothing they can do. Spending time with someone who doesn't feel well or someone who's lonely Expressing gratitude to those who serve us here at Presentation Manor are some of the things all of us can do here and now. Some of us volunteer on committees. Before the pandemic, many of us were involved with the Becoming Neighbors program and still can be with telephone calls and video chat. We can still find ways to learn about social justice and ecological issues and write letters, sign petitions, make phone calls. We can continue making the effort of properly sorting our recycled compost and garbage. We can avoid bottled water. We can make very conscious decisions about which businesses we support when we need to shop. We can try to gently nudge our children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews to also become more aware and involved. What are you called to do here and now? Today is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception and today's gospel is the Annunciation. The angel surprised Mary with a new life plan and though a bit shaken and uncertain saying, how can this be? Mary says, yes. Our times are shaky and uncertain as well. Can we also say yes? And can we do it with love, peace, and joy? Remember, God is waiting for us. And here's another part of the good news. As our relationship with God grows closer, so do our relationships with each other. Sixth-century monk and abbot, Dorotheus of Gaza, spoke of our relationships like a wheel with spokes, with God at the center. 
As each of us draws closer to God, closer to the center, we cannot help but also draw closer to the spokes next to us. We draw closer to one another. And so it's not just God who is waiting for us. Everyone is waiting for us. As we draw closer to God and each other, living ever more deeply, love, peace, and joy, we are changing the world. We are changing all the things that are not okay together. I would like to end our time today by playing a song for reflection. It's called In Her Poor and is by Colleen Fulmer. The key line is, while God in her poor is waiting. There's a reference in the song to Jesus saying to Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wing. And so in this song, God is imaged as feminine. While God in her poor is waiting. This line summarizes the message of John the Baptist. It reminds us that things are not okay the way they are. It reminds us that God is waiting for us. And finally, it reminds us that God in the poor, in those lacking justice, in all of creation, is waiting for us to change the things that are not okay. And the good news is that each of us have a part in creating this change. While darkness looms in the north, shadows of Star War fantasies feeding their nuclear disease. While God in her poor is trembling. Sweet.